The film begins with a man named Frank, who stands disoriented in his room when two armed men subdue him. When he comes to, however, he finds himself locked in a room with no visible means of exit and only a chair and a bed. A camera descends from the ceiling while he limps towards the other wall, calling out to him with a man's voice. The voice identifies itself as his LSO, life support officer, and calls himself Howard. When Frank questions what that is and where he is, Howard doesn't reveal anything, saying that it was covered in admission and staging, and that his only purpose is to acclimate Frank to ISN, Integrated Surveillance Network, Habitat and Service. Suddenly, Frank realizes that he's been arrested and is in a detention facility by the ISN. Though Frank insists he's an innocent civilian, Howard replies that Frank isn't arrested but is being processed. But Howard cannot help him, as he's not authorized to do so. Howard's only job is to keep Frank alive. Howard offers Frank food and drink, but Frank doesn't want anything. Howard offers him to take a walk, but when Frank accepts this, Howard extends a treadmill. When Frank asks to talk to Howard's supervisor, Howard reveals that he doesn't have a supervisor and cannot even tell Frank the reason for his arrest. Frank has a flashback of himself outside, watching the news of the disappearance of Fletcher May, the leader of an alliance called IFO against the ISN, which caused protests around the country. Frank suddenly realizes that no one in the outside world is aware of what happened to him, as he simply disappeared without explanation. Frank and Howard launch into a conversation, revealing where they were born and grew up. When Frank questions how Howard got into ISN, Howard is nonchalant about it, considering it just a job. This shocks Frank, who asks him to take accountability for detaining him here without any due process. But Howard doesn't care. Frank asks for food but suddenly realizes that he left his dog back in his apartment and asks Howard to check on him, but Howard replies that it's not his department. Frank, furious, threatens to punch the camera, which retrieves itself. He has another flashback of himself outside, riding a train in the middle of the night. Frank is pursued by suspicious men in the city and hides in an alley. He wakes up and asks Howard for water. Howard notices that Frank has peed on the floor and reveals that there is a bathroom he can ask for. When he enters it, however, the door locks and he hears the bathroom rotating. When he comes out, however, the floor is clean, but no one has entered to clean anything. Frank has another flashback of himself in a coffee shop with the owner, Gabby. Howard offers Frank a potion that tastes horrible to Frank, but Howard reminds him that it has all the essential vitamins and minerals he needs. When Frank asks if Howard has tasted it himself, Howard replies that he does not have that information. Suddenly Frank realizes that Howard is artificial intelligence. Frank becomes paranoid and continues to kick around the walls of his prison. When Howard tells him to calm down, he refuses to talk to a computer and tells him to get a real person on the line. Suddenly, Frank asks Howard about what he meant when he said he was born in Texas and grew up in Seattle, and Howard reveals that he was built in Texas and programmed in Seattle. Frank is able to determine that Howard is an IR-12 model with AI-6 programming and feels honored to have himself supervised by such advanced machinery. Frank knows a lot about computers, and Howard asks him why, but Frank says he hates computers. He suddenly recalls himself back in the coffee shop, where Gabby tries to guess his name. Frank sees the picture from the film's beginning, which he saw when he was arrested. Gabby reveals that she took that photo and correctly guesses Frank's name by holding his hands. Suddenly, Frank is arrested and wakes up in prison again. At night, Frank notices a device pulsating on the other wall, and when he tries to interact with it, his hand begins to shake, and he has flashbacks of his life outside and visiting Gabby's coffee shop prior to his arrest. This time, however, the experience is so vivid that Frank stands in shock as Gabby asks him to give her his hand. When she guesses his name, Frank tells her to stop it, and he's suddenly arrested. He feels the pain of the moment in his prison. He tells Howard about it and asks what the device on the wall is, but Howard thinks it's for ventilation. When Frank questions why his AI cannot answer such a simple question, Howard says that he's only programmed to follow his protocols to keep Frank alive and contained until he's processed. They become friendly, and Howard begins to question why he wasn't told anything about Frank. Frank thinks it's reasonable since there will be no evidence in the case of Howard being hacked. Howard reveals that Frank is his first assignment, but Frank thinks that might not be true, as Howard's programmers can always clean his memory. Frank suddenly realizes that Howard is as much of a prisoner here as Frank. Howard questions why Frank hates computers, and Frank hesitantly reveals that his father died of a heart illness, but he was kept alive for four years with the help of a machine despite the fact that he wanted to die. The two become close, and Howard reveals that he found an error in Frank's file, which says that he came from the same place he was sent to which is impossible. Howard could contact outside authorities for this by contacting repair maintenance, but something must need to be repaired before Howard can make that request. Frank decides to break Howard in order to give him the incentive, 
but Howard reveals that since he's aware of being attacked, he must evade it by initiating security protocols. He tries to distract Howard by ordering a coffee and punches the camera, but Howard instantly releases sleeping gas, despite Frank's protests, who is knocked out. He has flashbacks of himself being drugged and carried into his prison, and finds himself in Gabby's coffee shop again. This time, he sits in anticipation of being arrested while Gabby tries to guess his name, but nobody comes. Frank is confused and tries to talk to Gabby, telling her that this isn't real, but Gabby asks him for help with closing the shop. Frank complies, expecting an arrest, but nothing happens. When Gabby goes inside, Frank starts tampering with her AI security system, and Gabby tells him not to do it since she could lose her license. Frank only wants to check its readings and asks for Gabby's help. When the scanner scans him, it gives Frank another ID, confusing him for someone else. Just as Frank realizes this, he is arrested and wakes up in his prison, realizing that he's been arrested for someone else's crimes. He shares this discovery with Howard, who finds it unreasonable that bioscanners can make errors, but Frank insists it was not his ID. Howard believes that since it came from his subconscious mind, Frank only sees what he wants to see, but Frank insists that he doesn't have control over what the machine makes him see. Now he wants to figure out whose ID that was, but since he cannot recall the number entirely, he returns to the memory through the machine. He wakes up in his bed and goes through the entire day. However, at night he sees an explosion blow the city. Suddenly lights dim and flash in his prison, and when Frank calls Howard he doesn't answer. After some time, backup power comes on, but Howard is still unresponsive. Frank calls out for help, to no avail. A long time passes like this. Feeling thirsty, Frank starts collecting drops of water falling from the ceiling in a glass of water. He suddenly hears a knocking sound, and across an air vent finds a man, who is surprised to see him too. The man reveals himself as another prisoner. He tells Frank that the Alliance succeeded and crashed the entire ISN network, which is what caused the power outage. He believes that someone will come to rescue them from here, and identifies himself as Fletcher May, the leader of the Alliance. He gives Frank a pipe he took from his bathroom to try to break himself out. Frank asks about the explosion that rocked him, but Fletcher thinks a transformer blew up. But Frank reminds Fletcher of the failsafe installed within the ISN, which could have attacked anyone that tried to take the ISN down, including itself, meaning that there could be no one out there to help them since everyone was killed. Fletcher is able to dig through but only finds the same concrete room on the other side. Fletcher becomes depressed. Frank asks him about the device, and Fletcher reveals that he knows how to fight it. He further tells him that the device taps into a human's neurotransmitters, the chemical impulses that create memories, but you could deceive the machine by thinking about something else and changing smaller details in that memory. After some time, Fletcher calls out to Frank, saying he believes he will not make it another day, and he realizes that no one will save him. Thinking it to be the preferable alternative, he commits <laughs> Frank suddenly awakens in his prison, with everything back to normal and power back. He calls out to Fletcher, but Howard replies, who has been rebooted and believes he's seeing Frank for the very first time. Frank returns to Gabby's coffee shop but tells her he only wants to sit this time. Gabby guesses his name on the first try which surprises Frank, who questions her about it, saying she usually makes wrong guesses at first. But Gabby says they know each other. When Gabby's scanner turns on, Frank immediately hides, saying he does not want to be scanned. He tells Gabby that none of this is real, and that he's being held in a detention facility, and his neurotransmitters are being scanned. He just wants to sit down and enjoy the day. Though Gabby is surprised, she offers him a free cup of coffee, and the two start talking, even after Gabby closes the shop. Frank says he doesn't control it when she asks when he will return to the bunker. He continues to spend the rest of the following days in and out of the device, becoming closer and closer with Gabby until he sees her inside the prison, and the two realities blur. In one memory, he and Gabby even assaulted those who came to arrest him. When he asks the officer why they're after him, he doesn't answer, and Frank understands why, and allows them to leave. He tells Gabby that this is a place in his memory, and he doesn't know why he was arrested. He and Gabby decide to figure this out together. Frank noticed that Howard went offline for 12 seconds the following day for some reason. He shares this discovery with Gabby in his memory, who now lives with him. The two plan Frank's escape together. Frank wants to initiate his plan today. Gabby is hesitant about it since she wants to spend more time with Frank, but Frank insists that this is a dream world and he cannot stay here anymore. Gabby asks if there's nothing out there, or if he could return to her but eventually decides that she's being selfish. She tells him to look for her in the real world. He pays Gabby the money, and just as she inputs his name, the scanner activates, and Frank kisses her. He prepares to be arrested and wakes up in his prison. This time, he goes through his routine, but makes Howard repeat his phrases several times before answering. 
Each time, Howard becomes slower. Frank asks for a bathroom break, but Howard, growing increasingly slower, doesn't open it at first. When he does, however, Frank says he doesn't need it. Howard, becoming super slow, goes offline, and Frank rushes with his plan. He covers the camera with a bag and retrieves the pipe from the bathroom. He covers his face with his shirt and braces for assault. Just as Howard comes to, he releases the sleeping gas and says he's calling for help. A compartment opens, and a drone crawls out of it. But Frank subdues it by placing the pipe in its back and exits through the compartment. He finds himself in a massive storage room and starts exploring, but the noise of the drone prompts him to hide. Frank proceeds deeper, climbs a ladder, and opens a door, revealing the blinding sunlight to him. Frank is in the middle of nowhere, with mountains surrounding him. As the door behind him closes, Frank rushes into the open desert. He continues walking for some time and reaches wind turbines, but no human is in sight. He takes shelter from the sun in a tunnel. Meanwhile, Gabby waits for him. Frank continues his trek until he reaches a road and a gas station. He enters the store and finding it empty, rushes to drink the water. Suddenly he finds Gabby's pictures on the wall and realizes he's still inside his prison. Frank suddenly becomes depressed, and the following morning he tells Frank that he has to let him outside since he's breaking down. Howard will eventually be unable to keep Frank alive, which is against his job. Howard suddenly becomes confused and starts avoiding the conversation, but Frank tells him to listen to him. In order to convince him, Frank finally reveals that he lied to Howard and knew why he was arrested. Frank was a member of the Alliance who apparently sabotaged a government operation with a computer virus. He tells Howard that there is no food and coffee, and that Howard is broken, but there is no one left to fix him. He insists that the only way to keep Frank alive is to let him go. He tells Howard to override the protocols, but Howard apologizes, saying he can only do what he's programmed to do. Broken, Frank sits down. Howard suggests coffee, but no coffee comes out. Frank asks for music and enters his memory with Gabby. However, outside he ties a noose around his neck and tries to commit by hanging from Howard's camera. Both Howard and Gabby tell him to stop. Howard releases the sleeping gas, and the drone reappears. Frank's noose cuts loose, and he falls to the floor. When the drone attacks Frank, Frank dodges its tranquilizer, rushes to the opening in the wall, and asks Howard for help. Howard complies and closes the door, allowing Frank to walk away. Gabby is shown left alone in the room. Frank enters Howard's monitoring room this time, but finds no one there. He talks to Howard, who is relieved that Frank has made out, and asks him what's out there. Frank says there's nothing. Howard asks Frank to fix him, but Frank says he cannot. Frank recalls how his father was relieved when his life support was cut off. And similarly, he turns off Howard, who cannot be fixed. He climbs the ladder to the exit, and this time emerges into a snow-covered wasteland in the middle of the mountains. He walks for some time until, eventually, he finds the tree from Gabby's photograph. Believing this to be Howard's trap, he prepares to be arrested, but only finds two hikers who rescue him. We learn through news reports that he was trapped in a black site abandoned by the previous government, which was powered by wind turbines, and its supplies were all gone. Frank is the only survivor among all the people from the Alliance who is being imprisoned there. Frank goes to Gabby's coffee shop and stares happily at her photograph. He finds a USB behind the frame and dumps it in the dustbin. He meets Gabby, who reveals she took the photograph, but Frank already knows. When Gabby offers him coffee, Frank thanks her and calls her Gabby. But Gabby reveals that it is not her real name, but of the girl whose apron she was wearing back then, and her real name is Madeline. When Frank is about to tell his name, Madeline says she will guess it, but is unable to make the right guess, even after many tries. Frank sits down to let her guess it, and in the closing shot, we see a security camera quite like Howard.